Now we get to question 18, which is about atomic number and atomic mass and neutron number. It says, how many neutrons does a tin atom have? And it gives you SN5118. Well, what does that mean, SN5118? Then it says, how many neutrons does it have? 118, 50, 68, or 69? And then it says, how many electrons does it have? 118, 50, 68, 69. So let's go over this notation and understand what this means. SN5118, the number on the bottom is how many protons an atom has. Okay, so the, in the nucleus, you have the protons and you have the neutrons. Okay, <clears throat> okay, so the bottom on the number, often wrote, written as A, is atomic number. Atomic number, and it tells you how many protons, and therefore it will tell you the, how much positive charge it has. Because the protons are positively charged, the neutrons are not charged. The one at the top is the atomic mass, we can call that Z, which is the combination of how many protons it has and how many neutrons it has, and of course how many electrons it has. It has a certain number of electrons orbiting around the nucleus, but the electron's mass is very, very negligible when compared to the proton's mass and the neutron's mass. So in the total mass of the atom, basically the electron's mass is not even counted, okay? So the atomic uh, mass plus the number of neutrons known as the neutron number, we can say A plus N is equal to Z, right? The atomic number, which is the number of protons, number of protons, the neutron number, which is the number of neutrons, and that's equal to the atomic mass. So in this case, we, have, we are given 50. Usually you will be told what the total mass is. So if this is 50, we don't know N, and then the uh, atomic mass is 118, then the N is equal to 68. So there, is, there are um, 68 neutrons. So the answer is C, 68 neutrons. Now how many electrons will it have? Well, we are assuming in this problem that the uh, atom is not ionized. It's a neutral atom. So a neutral atom will have the same number of electrons as it has protons, if it is not ionized, right? So it should have, how many protons did it have? 50, right? So if it has 50 protons, it has to have 50 electrons. So the answer is B. It has 50 uh, electrons, right? We could go a little bit more in depth here and analyze this into a little greater detail. <clears throat> it so happens that the atomic mass is basically, uh, we use a, a unit system known as the atomic mass unit. Atomic mass unit, U. And uh, it turns out that this one U is equal to 1.66 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. What is the formal definition of the atomic mass unit? It happens to be defined as 1 12th of the mass of natural carbon, which is carbon is 6 12th. So a uh, natural carbon, which is uh, six protons, six neutrons, has a mass of about 12 um, atomic mass units. One twelfth of that is the formal definition of the mass atomic mass unit, right? <clears throat> so then when we do the calculations, that comes out to be 1.66 times 10 to the minus 27 kilogram, okay? Then we can uh, state what the mass of the proton is in terms of the atomic mass unit. The mass of the proton, 1.67, Two six two times ten to the minus twenty seven kilogram, which you can see is a little bit more than the atomic mass unit. So in terms of the atomic mass unit, it will be one point zero zero seven three use. Okay, the mass of the proton. The mass of the neutron is equal to one point six seven. 493 
times 10 to the minus 27 kilogram, you can see the neutron is a little bit heavier than the proton, and therefore it's going to be a bigger number in terms of the atomic mass unit, 1.00869, 869Us, okay? <coughs> 9.109 times 10 to the minus 31 kilogram, which is 0 .00055, 0 .00055 0 .00055 atomic mass units. So quite a lot less than the mass of the proton or neutron, right? Well, now, one of the interesting things is this. When we bring a proton and another proton together, or we bring a proton and a neutron together, it ends up that there, there is something known as binding energy, which is the energy that it takes to bring them together and the energy that it takes to separate them, right? So because of this binding energy, we get the concept of um, nuclear fusion. And then from there, we get the concept of uh, nuclear bombs and so on and so forth. And this is the way that the stars make energy using nuclear fu fusion, right? So what ends up happening is this. When a proton and a neutron comes together, you would think the combined mass of the, the two would be equal to what? You would think the combined mass would be the sum of these two, right? The, when you add these two, what do you get? Mass of the proton plus mass of the neutron. You end up getting, um, we would get 9, 9, 15, 1, 0, 2, right? So this would be the combined mass of the two if we just were to add it. Well, it's going to turn out that the combined mass of the two is actually less than that because of their binding energy. So we have MP plus MN is actually going to turn out to be 2.0141U, right? The close kind of rough analogy of this that I can give is, let's say you have two people that are meeting for the first time. It takes a certain amount of energy to get them together, maybe for a lunch appointment, maybe it's a business appointment, or maybe it's some kind of date or something like that, right? So it takes a certain amount of work to plan and everything like that. Once they are together, if they become friends and they bond, then it's gonna be easier for them to get to meet each other at other times because they have a shared interest, right? So their combined energy and effort of meeting together is gonna be reduced. So a rough example of that shows you that the combined uh, mass of the two and therefore the combined energy of the two is less than the energy of each one due to this binding energy, right? Okay, now if we go back to this, we can think of this with a little bit greater detail, right? In the tables, the SN, the tin, the atomic mass will be given to you in a little bit more finer detail instead of just saying 118. For example, with the, the tin SN, it's actually 118.71. Most likely this is a rounded number, but this is the combined mass of the protons and neutrons in units of um, uh, atomic mass units, right? You can see there's 50 protons and we stated that there were 68 neutrons, what's gonna be the combined mass of that? Well, if we just took the individual mass of the proton, right, and that would be, um, one point zero zero seven three and then sixty eight the neutrons would be one point zero zero eight six nine you will notice that the combined mass of the proton and the neutron if you put them together will be less than the one eighteen point seven one so one eighteen point nine four nine right so if we simply just add the two we get 118.9, but in the data tables, it tells us that it's actually 118.71. If we subtract them, then we see that the difference is about 0.23 or so atomic mass units. So this tells us how much energy went into the binding of the neutrons and the protons, okay? <clears throat> Later on, I'll show you how to do calculations on this using 
Einstein's equation E equals mc squared and how this will lead to the uh, whole concept of um, hydrogen fusion and other kinds of forms of fusion. Um, by the way, one thing you should notice is that the number of neutrons for most atoms tends to be larger than the number of uh, protons. This is due to the fact that the protons are repelling each other and the neutrons act as a source of glue to bind the nucleus together. Take a graph of the, the atomic mass Z versus the uh, <clears throat> atomic number. Let's say you had 10 protons. Let's assume there were always this equal number of neutrons as the uh, protons, right? If there were 10 protons, 10 neutrons, the Z would be equal to 20. Right? If there were 20 protons, 20 neutrons, Z would equal 40, right? So we would get a straight line, right? Whose slope is two, right? And, uh, and basically uh, that would mean that um, the number of protons and the number of neutrons being equal, the difference of uh, the, the sum of 10 and 10, that's giving you 20, the sum of 20 and 20, that's giving you 40 uh, for the atomic mass. So this line would have a slope of two, but it actually turns out that for uh, the heavier the element gets, there are more neutrons than protons. So the graph has this kind of distribution. It starts out here, but then the number of neutrons starts getting bigger, 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 bigger. And then this line goes like this, and then this starts taking off. You can see here, there's 50 protons, 68 neutrons. Quite a lot more than the number of protons, right? And this is actually helping to bind the nucleus together, okay? So thank you very much. Now you have a little bit better understanding of all of these kinds of things. Thank you.